Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm your host, Coach Evan. And today we're going to do something a little different. Don't have film for you. Going to be like a, a, a conversation. And with all Ravens YouTubers, it's always a good conversation. And I'm bringing on a guy today that really needs no introduction once I put him on the screen. But I do like to give people their flowers, especially when they take the time out to do something for me. And has also kind of inspired me in what we're doing right here. So my guest today is, is none other than Ing Raven. And to kind of sum up our our relationship so far is he was the first guy, the first Ravens YouTuber that I saw. And so seeing how he did his thing and how he handled his business and the positivity and stuff that he, you know, show, shows is his inspiration to all. Now, everybody knows he's team keep it clean. Am I 100 percent team keep it clean? No, I'm not. I'm be honest. But whenever I'm around him, I keep it clean. And today we're gonna be clean because I respect out of respect for him his brand and what he's trying to do. So uh, without that. further introduction, and we know we had some issues last week. Uh, the message you came back with, that was so professional. The way you handled that oh. situation, the way you, you you made a positive out of what potentially could have been a negative. I, I appreciate that so much. And the way you handled it, oh, makes yeah, me look at myself and make sure it makes me want to be a better person. Because I know I probably would have fired off too, without, but I'd have done it without thinking about the situation but just it seems like you sat back thought about it and came with a, with a beautiful response and i appreciate that yeah yeah i mean it's, it's life and, and again it's, it's something that we're used to too so uh we, we've had plenty of uh experiences um and situations that i guess have uh, sort of taught us along the way um so i mean it, it wasn't nothing and then when you really think about it um a lot of people try to project their own negative thoughts, emotions, and stuff that they're going through. They try to project that uh, onto you. Um, they they look at you to be sort of an, an easy target, so to speak. Um, and, and then a lot of times, too, with stuff like that, when you actually say stuff out loud of what, what's going on, like for people, people are upset that you are sharing your opinion on your YouTube channel and people getting upset about that. It's like you say stuff out loud and it, and it just shows you how much it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um so it, it, it really wasn't nothing it, it wasn't a big deal but I just felt like uh it was a good opportunity um just to reflect on how how much how positive people are uh, and just how much people really support and there, there's going to be negative people with anything uh mm -hmm. and anything that you do especially with growth there's going to be negative people but as long as you uh you focus on the right thing and just know that you acknowledge the positive more than the negative everything will be straight yeah, I appreciate that. And that's something we all can aspire to be, at, you know, just humans in, in general, just to, mm -hmm. to look back and not be knee jerkish. And that's, I think that's my biggest uh, thing as an adult mm -hmm. to, to do is not be knee jerkish, to sit back and think about situations before you respond. Now, I think I've done a lot better than my wife has helped me out with that a lot, too. Oh, but yeah, um, they <laughs> that's, they're they a lot sure more do. calmer, calmer than, than us. Uh -huh. um, let's get into this Ravens football talk, which is what we're here uh -huh. for. And we're going to talk today about the running back room and the wide receiver room. So I'm going to start with the running back room. I got a couple mm. questions to, to I want to get your opinion and I'll kind of give you mine too also. But each question, mm. you go ahead and start off and I'll kind of you know bounce off what you say. The first question is, how long will we have to wait until J.K. is healthy? Mm. What's your opinion on the health of J.K.? Um, I just think it would be one of those things where they, uh, they really ease him back in. Um, Ravens have been showing this offseason um, that they aren't rushing people, that they are taking their time with everybody, especially these people who've been coming back from major injuries last year. Uh, and J.K. Dobbins, he's been no different. Um, so I think, um, well, I don't even know if I can necessarily put a timetable on it, uh, but I think that's a big reason why they brought in uh, King and Drake, too, um, to just sort of ease any concerns, or not necessarily ease any concerns about J.K., but ease the rush or ease any pressure that might be on JK. Cause I mean, he's going to put enough pressure on himself to, to want to come back. Cause he wants to be back obviously. Um, but having a veteran running back like Drake, uh, also them having brought in Mike Davis and still keeping justice Hill and, and Beatty's on the practice squad, of course. Um, I, I think it's with, with JK that just allows them more leeway, uh, that allows them to have more options. Um, so, again, as far as a timetable, I, I'm not sure, but I like what they've done to sort of uh, stay ready so they ain't got to get ready. So because okay. if you you put all your eggs in the J.K. basket early on in the season, it's like, yeah, you you want him to be your 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 lead back. And I was looking like what he was going to be last year. 
Uh, but then, of course, everything happened how it happened. Um, but now that just, again, it, it alleviates any pressure that puts that's on him and that's on the Ravens as a whole um, going into the season and during the season, of course. My take on it is I, I thought I initially thought he'd be ready for week one, maybe 100 mm-hmm. percent. But the way they handled the running back situation, like you said, bringing in Drake, to me, that signals signals that he's not where they need him to be or where they feel right. comfortable mm-hmm. with him being at. And so I, as far as Drake coming in, which kind of leads me into my my next question, do you think he has anything? And I did a video about it. Do you think he has anything left in the tank? Because mm-hmm. the reason I asked that question, because last year he only had 60 some odd carries, but he was not the number one back. Uh, he was in kind of in a crowded backfield. And then the year before that, he had almost a thousand yards rushing and he can catch the ball at the backfield. So are we getting a guy that's on the verge of falling off that cliff or are we getting a guy that still has something left? Nah, I think it could be like right in the middle. Um, you mentioned how he only had uh, like 60 some carries last year. Ravens, uh, they're used to that. They're used to that 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 running back by committee um, because they've been doing it like for, for so long. Uh, so with Drake, it, it gives them sort of a a, a safe option because they're obviously not spending a bunch of money on paying him. Um, but he gives them, again, some some insurance uh, for like you mentioned with J.K. Because, yeah, that, that is true that it it does give you sort of an indicator that, all right, yeah, J.K. not ready yet. Just like with uh, Mike Davis, he gave us an indicator that, oh, Gus Edwards, he's not ready yet. Um, so yeah, Ravens, they, they, they do these things to where they'll make these signings and without letting you know directly, they'll be letting you know, uh, what's going on with somebody else. So yeah, man, I, I do think, uh, he still got some burst, uh, and that, and that'll be good for the Ravens. And, and the thing with him that I, um, he, he's getting signed at a, at a better time or a little better time than the guys from last year. And he's obviously a lot younger than the guys from last year. Cause last year was, uh, was uh, Latavius Murray, Devontae Freeman, Freeman, and then even Le'Veon Bell for, yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> we got a little sample size, but, um, just the timing of it. Cause those guys, um, they got signed like right, 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 right before the mm-hmm. season. Like he got signed like a little before the season, but they got signed like right, right before the season. Um, so with Drake, uh, he will have, and, and again, Ravens prepared better. They prepared right. a lot better than last year um, because with those guys, they were learning on the fly. A lot mm-hmm. of times it wasn't even pretty. Uh, but with Drake, they do have J.K. Um, mm-hmm. the, but they again, the guys we mentioned earlier too, Mike Davis, Justice Hill, Beatty on the practice squad. So they have guys that are already familiar with the system. Um, so that can help ease Drake in. So he ain't got to come in and, all right, Drake, we need you to be the lead back. All right, we need you to be that, that the number one back. It, it's nothing like that. Uh, it's like, all right, Drake, we need you. We, we know you're good at catching passes out of the backfield. He catches like a wide receiver to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, yeah, right, we, we know what you can do. We'll, we'll ease you in because we got some other guys that can help carry the workload, too. It's not going to just be on one guy. So right. with Drake, um, I'm, I'm excited to see exactly how they use him uh, and, and how much they use him, too. All right. And last question for the running backs. And this could be a two-man question, but you know, I really mm-hmm. want to get your opinion on when – when everybody's fully healthy, so when we have J.K. back, when when Gus is back, who is the odd man out? Oh, or man. odd men out? Mm. That is such a good question. Um, when everybody's fully healthy, I wonder if we'll even get a situation where everybody is fully healthy. Guys, I, I didn't think about that either. <laughs> <laughs> man, uh, but you got you got Drake, you got J.K. Yeah. Dobbins, Mike Davis, Daddy <laughs> on the practice squad. Gus would be assuming it's gonna be healthy and just as heal. I feel like uh Beatty, he's in like a, a sort of safe spot since he's not on the actual roster, he's on a practice squad. So I feel mm-hmm. like he's safe there. Um JK Dobbins obviously ain't going anywhere. Um, I, I think, man, but you did say uh, with everybody healthy because I was gonna say everything depends a lot depends on Gus Edwards' health and mm-hmm. if he does come back. They said they expect him back, but we'll see. Um, I keep hearing that it's, it's gonna be a while, but again, we'll see. Um Mm. I feel like I want to say Justice Hill because Justice Hill seems su- like such an, an obvious pick. But then I think about the special teams and, mm-hmm. and I know how much they really, really value special teams. I'm not saying that there's not other guys on the roster that could do it, but ah, that, that's a tough one. But I, I, I guess I would go Justice Hill with Mike Davis. It's like, man, to me, I, I know to not a lot of people he didn't, but to me, he looked good. He, he looked like he, he just found me, me. Oh, OK. Uh, Cause I know there were a lot of people that felt like Mike Davis didn't look good. I felt like he looked just fine and he was ready to like 
not take over for Gus, but fill in for Gus. And not saying mm-hmm. that he is Gus Edwards, but he could fill in for Gus as that that bruising back, that goal line back, that short yardage back. But um, I, I guess I I would have to go with Justice Hill, and I guess um to fulfill that role, they would just have have somebody else fill in for him on special team. With the with Mike Davis, um, I think some people didn't like the way he played, but you got to realize we were experimenting with with offensive linemen, so we didn't run block the mm. greatest in the preseason. <laughs> they were experimenting with trying to you know I guess different combinations to see who can do what. So our run blocking wasn't the greatest, and you know it's going to be tremendously improved, which it was that third game. For those mm-hmm. nine snaps that Linderbaum was in there, the run mm-hmm. game was totally different. Not yeah. saying that he's the savior, but he's pretty darn good. And we saw some stuff that we didn't used to see. We saw some outside zone stuff, a lot, you know, and some inside zone stuff that we were efficient at. We weren't necessarily mm-hmm. efficient at it last year. We were efficient at power and counter last year, but if you can add – if you can have all four base runs in your arsenal, that's going to give Roman a lot to, to think about, especially with, with, with the backs that we have. I'm, I'm glad you said that, too, because that's important. Because uh, the, the more diversified your offense is, like you mentioned, the, the more the more you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's that saying, that old saying, the, the more you can do. Um, and that's so important in just not even in today's uh, day and age of football, but just in football in general. Uh, and the Ravens, we know that they'll – we know they're going to be able to run the ball. Well, we, we know that for sure. But the more ways you can do it, uh, especially with you having so many running backs, I feel like they got like 50 running backs on the team right now, but you have so many different styles of running backs too. Um, so if you could find different ways to complement each of their styles and, and different ways to use them efficiently, like you mentioned, yeah, that could go a long way. All right, let's switch uh, over to the wide receiver play. And I, yeah, I can still see the receivers on the on the screen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What's your overall view of the whole group, the, like the wide receiver room? Um, it's it's a prove it year. It's it's a prove it year. This receiving room is is a lot of unknown. Um, it's crazy that f- I think the uh, the receiver that is the most established, the Ravens just signed him like three weeks ago, in uh, Demarcus Robinson, the former chief and former Raider, just like Drake too. Um, Rashad yeah, Bateman. Man. Yeah, Rashad Bateman uh going into his second year. Um, I'm I'm pretty yeah, he got I think he had about like a little over 500 yards. So he got more, he got more yards, receiving yards in his career than James Prochet. He got more mm-hmm. receiving yards in his career than Devin Duvernay, who's going into his third year. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's it's just a lot of unknowns right now. And of course, there's Tylen Wallace as well. So with, with this group, um the, the biggest thing for me, because I, I was somebody that was very adamant this offseason that, hey, the Ravens should add a proven guy. But I, I wanted them to add a proven guy even before they let uh, Hollywood, before they traded Hollywood. Uh, but certainly um, after they traded him, I was for sure that they were going to add somebody or they were going to draft somebody. I was 1000 percent sure, but they didn't. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, so now it's, it's very important that these wide receivers that the Ravens have um, that to, I really hope that they just get the most out of them. Um, I hope they really play them to their strengths, put them in positions to where it's like, all right, uh, like Devin Duvernay, use him in a screen game. James Prochet, you can give him a little one-on-one, give him some jump balls and whatnot. Lamar got to trust him. And they got he got to be on the field too. Mm-hmm. Um, then, of course, with Rashad Bateman, the fact that he could run every route on a route tree, that's a beautiful thing. Um, and Tylen Wallace, I think big thing for him, hey, stay healthy. Yep. Stay, stay healthy. That, that's probably the biggest thing for him. Uh, and Demarcus Robinson, d- do what you did in preseason. I think that's one of the biggest reasons that they uh, brought him in, uh, an established guy, a deep ball guy. And Ravens got a lot of experience with Demarcus Robinson. It was like one of those things where, hey, if we can't stop him, then he's joining us, man. Um, so it's – I just uh, – I want to see their games complement each other. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the biggest things this year for the wide receivers too um, I that I'm looking forward to is hopefully the yak. Yak can make such a, a big difference and go such a long way uh, with this team. Now, with um, because last year and for the past couple of years, Hollywood has been the the quote unquote number one wide receiver for the Ravens, um, and he would get his yak like a lot on a lot of deep balls. If you catch him in stride on the deep balls, okay, cool. Um, but if it's something underneath, then he's not really a big yak guy. Um, because a lot of times he might go out of bounds, he might slide to the ground or whatnot. Um, so it, it could be more uh, yards that he could have gotten. And then, of course, there were a couple of drops um, over the years. And so he left some yards on the field. 
Um, but now with the guys that they have, uh, again, we mentioned the, the, the deep ball with Demarcus Robinson and, and Bateman. Now Bateman got some speed too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of times I, I forget that Bateman got some good speed because just last year, it was a sample size with him and Lamar because they didn't get to play that much together. Um, but then a lot of times he wasn't just, there were, there weren't many deep balls thrown his way. So again, a lot of times I don't, I don't, I forget that he has uh, some good speed. Um, so I just, uh, but I'm looking forward to the yak. And that was something that Bateman showed us last year. I remember like for his first, a, a big group of his first catches, they all went for first downs. First downs, yeah. Uh, and, and it was crazy. It's like, man, every time this dude catch the ball, he getting that first down. So it was a nice sign of uh, things to hopefully come. And with the uh, the guys like, again, Duvernay with Proche, um, those guys, are they they are physical. They're more physical uh, than Hollywood. And that, of course, ain't no shot to Hollywood at all. Y'all yeah, know that's my guy. But um, right. with, with, with Duvernay and Proche, they're they more physical type wide receivers. So they're going to fight for those extra yards. Really, all the Ravens receivers, that, that's something that they can do. They can fight uh, for those extra yards. So that can help take them uh, to another level. And that can make, it, make life easier for Lamar Jackson, too. Um, but an even bigger thing than that to me is just, again, the way that they are schemed up, the way that they are involved, the way that the emphasis is put uh, on their uh, on the game plans for each of the wide receivers. Um, if if the Ravens are making sure they take advantage of mismatches, trying to create mismatches um, exactly. and just really try to get these guys uh, involved in any way, shape or form, because you just don't want it to be for defenses. All right. Mark Andrews, uh, even though I know he's not a receiver, but all right, Mark Andrews, let's take him out the game. Let's double him. Oh, yeah, that dude Rashad Bateman. Okay, let's double him too. You don't want it to be where, all right, those two guys are taken out. What you going to do now? Exactly. So this is why it's, it's definitely a big uh, prove it year for Ravens receivers. And it's, 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 it's prove it. It's, it pr prove it or shut up, man. Mm -hmm. As far as the, uh, the yak you mentioned with uh, Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, with his size, and, you know, when I had receivers smaller like that, too, I would tell them similar to what he did. Do whatever. Don't take the big leak over the middle because I need you playing rather than you fighting for an extra yard. And mm -hmm. so with him catching those – and he probably shouldn't even run a lot of those routes, like, like all those hitches and stuff because his body ain't made for it. He's a deep ball guy. So I kind of blame that on Roman. Not the drops, just him, like, when he get the ball and maybe see somebody coming and get down. I Trust mm -hmm. me, I don't mind. He won 50 soaking wet. If not, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm – I'm exaggerating a little bit. And as far as uh, Robinson, I don't know if you know it or not, but he has, you're talking about production, he has more production by himself than any other wide receiver on the Ravens team. If you combine all these stats together, Robinson has more everything than them, Yeah, which is which is crazy. So that, that kind of makes him the best wide receiver, statistically, but, you know, <laughs> statistically. <laughs> um, second question. Uh-huh. Can, Pro can James Proche have a significant impact with this offense? Mm. I think it depends on how much they respect his game or don't respect his game. Mm. Um, last year, uh, we all know that the infamous game against, I think it was the Bengals, the whole seven catches for 77 yards, something like that. And then the next week, I think maybe even the next couple of weeks, he was on the inactive list. Yep. Um, so I, I think so much just depends because James, again, the, the biggest thing, and it sounds so cliche, but I think the biggest thing you want your wide receiver to do is be able to catch the ball. Yep. Um, cause that's first and foremost, because that's how everything starts with them catching the ball. Then what they do with it after that, it's up to them. Um, and James Prochet, he has gotten, he has, he seems a little bit faster this year, a little bit, um, but that can make a big difference. But um, mm, I, yeah, it's just all, it's, it's all about their, their respect for him right now. Uh, before I was assuming like, all right, before Demarcus Robinson, I'm like, all right, number one wide receiver, obviously Bateman. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, I, I just, I never saw Devin Duvernay as that, that number two guy. Mm -hmm. And then the thing with him too, um, I'm not sure how the Ravens are going to use him because in my eyes, he's just continued to be a gadget guy for them. Yeah. Kick returner, but then all, all the jet sweeps and all that. And they just, they never really involve. They never really use him like a a true wide receiver to me. Mm -hmm. um, he's been used sort of as a, a weapon, um, but with with James Prochet, uh, I would I would normally pencil him in like, all right, that's gonna be their their number two guy. Um, but then when they added Demarcus Robinson, it's like, oh, okay, well, hold up now. Um, so maybe it's Rashad Bateman and Demarcus Robinson. Then as like a slot guy could be James Prochet. Um, so I think he can have an impact 
um, on the wide receiver unit. Now, I think a lot of that, uh, yeah, it is up to uh, to Greg Roman to scheme him up, but it's also up to Lamar Jackson too. And I know a lot of people felt like uh, with, uh, well, definitely with Sammy Watkins' addition by subtraction, but also with Hollywood Brown because with Lamar, you know, like you knew, and there, I think there was um, – there was a safety on the Bengals that called it out. But us as Ravens fans, we've been calling it out before that safety even said anything. He was like, hey, just watch 5 and, and, and 89. Watch yep. 5 and 89 because you know that's who Lamar is going to. And he would because it would be Hollywood and Mark Andrews. But now uh, with Hollywood removed from the equation, um, it's like, all right, well, this gives Lamar Jackson an opportunity uh, to really build with the other guys and, and really show trust uh, in the other guys too. Um, and what was crazy to me, um last year was uh with Rashad Bateman um and I'm sorry we're switching gears a little bit going from Proche to Bateman but um it's just really about the, the the trust factor because last year Rashad Bateman obviously first round pick and he missed he had the uh what was it the groin injury I think oh yeah, hernia. Hernia. I what forgot what it was same yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But uh, he had an injury last year so that took him out like the first what five six games mm -hmm. so I remember um Last year, thinking, all right, they were like, all right, he's about to come back. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, the Ravens might play him like maybe like 50, maybe 60% of the snaps, something like that. But no, he was out there a lot. Mm -hmm. Rashad Bateman was out there a whole lot from his first game. So what that first game showed me was two things that were very significant. One, it showed me how much the Ravens really, really love Rashad Bateman, and they really trusted Rashad Bateman. But then number two, I was thinking, all right, Rashad Bateman, he's been out for a while. Um, yeah, him and Lamar Jackson, that chemistry is probably going to take some time to build up. Nope. From jump, very first game, Lamar oh. Jackson and Rashad Bateman, that chemistry was there. So Lamar Jackson, he trusted him. He gave him opportunities. Um, so with that, now with Hollywood removed from the situation, um, this will give Lamar Jackson even more trust and opportunities with his other guys too. Um, so that's something that I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And that can just that can diversify, like we were talking about earlier, that can diversify the offense because if you have more options, if you have more guys that you're turning into weapons, then that can make it harder for the defenses to pinpoint, all right, well, all right, we got Bateman double roll, we got Mark Andrews, we're taking him out the game. So that makes it harder. All right, oh, oh we're going to watch Demarcus Robinson. Are we going to have to watch a James Prochet? Hopefully they do. Hopefully that's what happens. Um, so it's up to just really everybody as a unit, uh, from mm -hmm. coaching to players, uh, to again, to, from from Greg Roman, Harbaugh to to Lamar to the receivers making the plays too, when when they're given the opportunity, it's up to everybody to really make it happen. Uh, so that's uh, hopefully they do, and and they can just work as a collective, a positive collective unit this this year. Now, what what I was thinking as far as um, with Proche, and then I'll mm -hmm. kind of piggyback off what you said. I was thinking he was our second best receiver too, but I also know I think he's a better slot receiver than he mm -hmm. is an outside guy. So that's why I was thinking one of those UDFAs or mm. um, Victor and, or I mean Victor or one of those other guys had a chance to be the number two receiver. And mm. This is pre Demarcus. I mm. thought they, they had a chance to to slide in and be the quote unquote number two receiver because Proche was so much better in the slot. I think him and Devin Duvernay are slot guys, not necessarily outside guys. Maybe you can mm. put them in a situation where they have a mismatch and can can do that. But traditionally, they're not outside guys. Now, bringing Robinson in, I think he's going to compliment Bateman the most. And I think Crochet is going to have a, a – he's going to be involved enough to where he can have – he can maybe quadruple his numbers. But there is one caveat to all this. And didn't bring him up because he don't play – technically don't play wide receiver. It's likely. <laughs> if, if likely can do the stuff that Crochet can do, but oh. at 6'4", 2", whatever – I think that's going to spell doom for Proche. Mm. And I think Proche, I mean, not Proche, I think likely may end up playing the slot, playing in the slot area, not necessarily labeled as a slot, a lot more than we think. And I think the, the best lineup we're going to see out there is is Mark, mm -hmm. likely, probably not from the start, Mark, likely, DeMarcus, and Bateman. Mm. You know, um, every year uh, the Ravens, they, they have, it's usually – about one, two, maybe three guys that you can tell that 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 they drafted, that they really, really love. 
um, and they admire these guys. And you could tell these guys are really going to get a lot of opportunity. Last year, that guy, uh, in my opinion, was Brandon Stevens. Mm -hmm. You could tell that they absolutely adored Brandon Stevens. Um, this guy was working with the starting unit in preseason last year. And then, of course, he got a lot of playing time last year. Then the injuries made his playing time increase even more. Um, but this year, some of the guys that you can tell that they absolutely adore, Travis Jones, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully he can get healthy soon. Uh, and when he comes back, he'll be completely healthy. And Ravens don't rush it. Um, but also, Isaiah Likely is one of those guys, for sure, that they love. Um, so normally, um, Ravens draft a receiver, Ravens draft a tight end. Uh, a lot of times we can wonder, like, huh. Is this guy really going to get playing time like that? Is he really going to get an opportunity? But we're likely, you, it's like you fit, you know, like they are going to give likely uh, <laughs> opportunities. They're going to get have that dude uh, on the field from jump. Like I, I, I remember, um, and I know I wasn't the only one. It was a lot of us that in with the second preseason game, after his first couple catches, I'm like, no, 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 take him off. He's done. <laughs> he, he ain't got nothing else to prove. Isaiah likely does not need to be on that field anymore. anymore. He, he's done. Yeah. But they kept throwing him, kept throwing him, kept throwing him. Gave him his honey yards. They ain't gave him his touchdown. I was like, all right, Ravens. All right, y'all showing did, off. Did you now. notice they put him back in to get the touchdown? Yeah. That was like, all crazy. right, Ravens. Y'all, y'all <laughs> slick, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he, he came out healthy because you, you know that he's just gonna be a big part of what they do. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's something that I, I didn't think about. Um, the possibility of him taking snaps away from a, a James Prochet. And yeah, yeah, that's real because his very first catch in the very first preseason game. He showed, I know he used to play receiver and whatnot, but still, he he showed just how, like, shifty he was. I was like, oh, okay, likely. Let's go now, man. And yep. he is a, uh, he's a big-time yak guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, so, that's, yeah, that's, that's a really good saying. point. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Tough on him. And switch to our last topic. We're going to talk about this guy, uh, Ryan Stanley. So, I, mm. I, me personally, I've been waiting on Stanley to practice, waiting on Stanley to practice. Mm -hmm. Like, he needs to practice to, to prove just to me that he's even close to being ready. And so when he didn't practice right after the mm. third preseason game, I was extremely nervous. The next day it went by, I'm like, hold on, something, something got to be wrong. Mm. But then he practiced yesterday and, mm -hmm. you know, they were in shorts and whatnot. And he looked, you know, I guess good as you can look in shorts. What do you think is going on with Stanley and what's the timetable of him playing and, and whatnot? I, um, I wouldn't expect him to play. Uh, in this first uh, this first regular season game against the Jets. Um, and I just think it's I think it's both sides being extra cautious, both the Ravens and um, and Ronnie Stanley. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ravens, they brought in Adrian Dixon, uh, who used to be a, a athletic trainer with the uh, the Tennessee Titans. Um, and the thing with the Tennessee Titans, they had lost a lot of guys last year, too. They lost a whole yeah. lot of guys throughout the season due to injury last year. But a lot of those guys, they ended up coming back mm -hmm. uh, and they ended up coming back and being healthy, not having any setbacks, anything like that. So with the Ravens plucking him from that staff, um, I think they trying to take the same approach to where they want guys to come back, obviously, and come back fully healthy, but they don't want any setbacks. So I think it's one of those things where they just, again, being extremely cautious at every side is being extremely cautious. And Ronnie Stanley, like, look, man, I I'm paid already. <laughs> and I, uh, I I have an injury history, so I'm not rushing. I, I'm, right. I'm I'm taking my time. Um, yeah, I, I know this team. I know the coaching staff or whatever. I want to be out there with my guys, but I'm not going to rush when I feel all the way. Because John Harbaugh, he he made a comment in Impressor the other day where he was like, um, it was, and it was before Ronnie had practice. Uh, he made a comment in Impressor where he was like, oh, it's it's up to Ronnie. When, when Ronnie's ready to come back, then it's up to how Ronnie feels, I mean. Mm -hmm. Um so I, th I thought that was significant. So that kind of put it on Ronnie. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that he is back. But, yeah, for this first week, I don't expect him to, to play. Um, week two sounds more reasonable. Uh, and, and everything just depends on how much he practices. If he does a full team practice or he's just doing individual stuff. No, he's practicing with the team yesterday, like you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just really hope that they take their time with it, though. And I, I honestly, I would not be mad. If he didn't play week two, mm -hmm. um, maybe if it was a week three, week three, week four type of thing. But I, I expect it right now, the way that things are, I would expect it to be week two. I, I don't think he'll be out there versus the Jets. Um, going into this season, this, this offseason, uh, I, I continuously said anything you get from Ronnie Stanley this year is a bonus. Um, yes. Because I just felt like the Ravens should not have put 
uh, all their eggs in the Ronnie Stanley basket. And they were in a tough situation uh, because Ronnie Stanley is on a contract for a, a whole lot of money. Lot of money. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you and they the Ravens cannot do anything about it. And now they recently um, they restructured his contract. So you put even more of that on the back end. So you really can't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, all right, cool. So I felt like the Ravens should get some backup plans. And they they kept Jawan James. Like, okay, they 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 signed Morgan Moses, and he's expected to be a right tackle. Of course, Patrick McCary, that's another mm -hmm. option that they have at left tackle, too. Um, Daniel Filele, uh, he's more so a right tackle, too, but you never know. They might try to switch him up. But um, I was glad that the Ravens did make some moves on the offensive line, but I know it was in, it was in a very tricky spot because you don't want to go out, all right, let's use a first-round pick on a, on a left tackle. And you got Ronnie Stanley on this big contract. I, mm -hmm. I know it's, it's really hard. You're, you're, you're sort of limited on what you can do to um, as a contingency plan for Ronnie Stanley. But the fact that he's making his way back now, that, that's a really good thing. Because to me, uh, Ronnie Stanley is sort of the Jimmy Smith uh, on offense. And what I mean when I say that is like, we remember seasons back when Jimmy Smith, when he was playing, like, all right, Ravens defense holding it down, Ravens secondary. Oh, yeah, they showing out. And as soon as Jimmy Smith went down, everything yep. fell apart. And now on the flip side, it's the same thing with Ronnie Stanley. Uh, ever since he's been out, the offensive line, it just has completely uh, fallen apart. I mean, you can say the same thing for Marshall Yonder, too. But anyway, with, with Ronnie Stanley, it's, he, he makes a big difference. So hey, they've been gone him, the same amount of time, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Because he's only played that one game since Yonder's been gone, correct? Am well, no, he, 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 no, he played um, – 2019 was Yonder's last year, but then in 2020, that's when uh, what week was it? I forgot. Was it week six? Or week eight? I don't remember what week it was that T.J. Watt went into his uh, went into his leg. Cause so he had played some of the uh, 2020 okay. season. He was playing okay. for a little bit. Then they then in that Steelers game, T.J. Watt went into his ankle, and that was a wrap. And then last year, of course, it was just that one the one game against the Raiders. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, yep. we'll, we'll see. That's all the questions I got for you, but I do. I thought about something, and I meant to say it earlier, but mm -hmm. we only have a sample size with Lamar and Bateman. I think they only had like mm -hmm. three or four games together, so we we right. can really look for a good connection with those two guys. Mm -hmm. But before we get out of here, I want you want you to let my people know that don't follow you, which there's probably maybe two <laughs> that follow me and don't follow you, where they can look for your, your stuff at on all your socials and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Basically, plug your stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it, and appreciate you having me on again, man. Um, I uh, it's it's team keep it clean. So the, the channel is is engraving vids, the, the YouTube, the Twitter, uh, Instagram, everything engraving vids. Um, like I mentioned, it's team keep it clean. So it's a uh, a family friendly environment, a family friendly channel uh, where everybody is welcome. Uh, obviously, we we talk Ravens literally every single day. We have videos every single day. Uh, sometimes two videos a day, sometimes three, just depending on how crazy stuff is. Um, but with this season starting, uh, things are picking up. Things are just getting more crazier than ever. Um, so you're welcome to come through, subscribe, um, and just just have a good time. It, again, it's for everybody. Uh, everybody's welcome. And just just come with a good vibe and come with good energy. Again, man, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, make yeah. sure you like, comment, subscribe to my stuff, to his stuff as well, and all the different other Ravens uh, content creators out there, man. I yeah. appreciate you for coming through again. Uh, yeah, say sure. say hello to the family for me. My my boy Carter is growing. It's it's <laughs> like a weed. My my kids out the house, so I look at other people with 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 smaller kids, and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gonna happen fast for them. They ain't even know it. Yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> uh, man. But appreciate, uh, appreciate you for coming through. And I uh, just hang on a second once I once I end it.